Good morning and good Shabbos, everyone. This Shabbat has a special name. It's called Shabbat Chazon, the Shabbos of vision. Now, if you look in the dictionary under the word vision, you find three different meanings. The first uh, definition of vision is to have proper vision, to be able to see clearly. And the first lesson in life of this Shabbat is you have to look at reality and see it truthfully and honestly and not be uh, biased and unduly influenced by your own personal perspective that taints the true reality. You know, in America when you go buy cigarettes, if you buy cigarettes, there's a warning that says, God forbid, it can cause cancer. But in Europe, not only is there a warning, but there's a photograph on every box of cigarettes that shows pictures of people sick, dying in the hospital with all different terrible illnesses as a result of smoking. And you would think, who would buy cigarettes with such photos on the boxes? But yet, people buy it. They don't see it. They don't see clearly. Furthermore, when you go through the airports in Europe, you see these chambers, smoking chambers, you know, maybe 15 feet by 15 feet with 20, 30 people crammed in, smoking, getting a cigarette in the middle of the airport in one room. And the, there's a cloud of smoke in the room that they're all inhaling. And you say, well, why would a person do that? so detrimental to the health, but unfortunately sometimes our desires and our motives can drive us through the point of addiction that we can't even see straight, we can't see clearly anymore. Second definition of vision in the dictionary is to have foresight, be able to see the future with a vision for the future, with a plan, with your mind's eye. And coming back from Israel, the land of Israel is a perfect example of a vision that the Jewish people never lost, of Lashana Babi Rushlaim next year in Jerusalem for 2,000 years, wherever we were in the world, we never lost our vision of where we need to return to. And indeed, the miracle of Israel is a result of that vision. But then there's the ultimate definition of vision in the dictionary, and that's to have an imagination, to imagine and see even that which doesn't exist. And that's what this Shabbat is all about. We mourn the destruction of the temple on Tisha B'Av, but the Shabbat before we have to have a vision of the third temple. You know, on the Shabbat that our synagogue was in Israel, we took a t walking tour on Shabbat afternoon with uh, by the name, a fellow by the name of Luria, Mr. Luria, who, Daniel Luria, who runs an organization called the Teret Kohanim. And their mission is to buy back land in the Muslim quarter of Jerusalem, to resettle Jerusalem entirely, with a Jewish presence. And they go into the Muslim quarter and buy buildings and put Jewish families in there. And we went on this walking tour deep into the Muslim quarter and we went to the homes owned by Jews and Jewish families living in the middle of the heart of the Muslim quarter. And we visited with these families on Shabbat afternoon with their children playing on the rooftops. And we came up to this rooftop in the middle of the Muslim quarter and there's a big Israeli flag on this building right in the middle of the Muslim quarter. And we went to the rail and looked out over the entire city of Jerusalem. And I saw a vision of Jerusalem that I couldn't see from any other perspective, from any other location. Usually when you come to the Western Wall, what do you see? You see the, to the wall and the dome of the rock on the top, the golden dome. But from this vision, from this view, from this perch, I was able to see not just the Golden Dome, but the whole plaza, I was able to see the entire mosque, I was able to see the whole Temple Mount. When I looked over the railing, I didn't see the Dome of the Rock, I didn't see the mosque. I saw the third temple. I saw the temple that will be rebuilt one day, like the first two that stood in that location. And that's what it means to have vision, to imagine. And that's what we have to do during this, these nine days. When we look at another person, don't look at them for who they are. Have a vision, an imagination of who they can be. And more importantly, when you look in the mirror, don't just see yourself for who you are. See yourself for who you can become. The story told about the Baba Rebbe when he came to America after the Holocaust, after losing his whole community. He opened the synagogue on the Upper West Side. And one day, on Shabbat morning, a survivor came to the synagogue to pray. And he had a beautiful voice and he led the service beautifully. The next week, Baba Rebbe's son is coming to Shul and he sees the man who led services the Shabbat before on a park bench smoking a cigarette. Comes into the synagogue, he tells his father, the Rebbe, you know that Jew who led the services, he's on the park bench smoking a cigarette. The Rebbe said, no, it's not him smoking. 
It's the Germans, it's the Nazis that are smoking. Meaning to say, he's a broken Jew. He's been through so much trauma, so much pain, so much suffering, that unfortunately he lost his faith in God. The Rebbe said, go back to the park and ask him to come into the synagogue. He went and called his Jew in. The Rebbe asked him to go lead services again. Some 25 years later, when the Rebbe had already relocated to Brooklyn, had built his big dynasty, a man came with his son to see the Rebbe. And he said to the Baba Rebbe, this is my son, he's getting married, I want the Rebbe to officiate at the wedding. And this man was a religious looking man and his son was a religious looking man. And then the man said to the Rebbe, do you remember me? And the Rebbe said, no. And he says, I was the chazan who was smoking on the park bench that you invited in to come lead the services. And he said to the Rebbe, do you know why I returned to my faith? Because I realized that it wasn't me that was smoking on Shabbat. It was the Nazis, it was the Germans that caused me to lose my faith. It wasn't the true me. The Rebbe had seen him for who he really was. Let us use these days to see others with a little bit of foresight, a little bit of imagination. See the best in others and in ourselves. Have a wonderful day.